Hello and welcome to the first episode of our new series, Rail Insights by First Alpine Railway Systems. My name is Gernot Frischenschlager and what I'd like to draw your attention to today is a product that most of us simply take for granted, while it's definitely worth rediscovering. I want to show you that rail today is much more than a simple piece of metal. It's not only the backbone of our global infrastructure, but has become a high-tech product without which our world would probably be a totally different place. In the first episode, we turn our attention to one of the literally most tense topics in the track sector. It's about a tiny area with a huge impact. An area of extremes where everything that is important comes together. And that tiny area is the contact surface between wheel and rail. The railroad has axles and rigid wheels on it, so the steering is done by the profile of the wheels. The wheel set is running on different radii, and with the right amount of radii difference, you can reduce slip and sliding of the wheel set. The interaction between wheel and rail is based on forces, and the forces can produce wear, rolling contact, fatigue, and corrugation. So, why is this so important? Imagine a train, several kilometers long, weighing hundreds of tons, transmitting all the forces at a point as big as my fingernail or a coin. It is clear that extreme demands are placed on the material, both wheel and rail. And it's also clear there is simply no room for error. So, how must the material of the wheel and the rail be designed to ensure smooth running and safety? A simple question, but one that is as old as the railway system itself. Let's take a closer look. As for the shape of the wheels, the curving behavior of a wheel set can also be influenced, of course, by the shape of the rail. This is what I want to demonstrate with our model here. When I put the wheel set on the rectangular shape profile and let it go, we can see that the wheel set moves perfectly through the curve without a high angle of attack. When I place the wheel set on the more round shaped profile and let it move, we can see that it generates a higher angle of attack and will even stop moving through the curve. And this is the effect of the profile in the steering behavior of the wheel set. In reality, this would mean for the light blue profile, we would have a huge angle of attack. This would mean more frictional work and of course also more rail wear. What we can do from a material perspective, we can influence the shape of the rail over time by assuring high wear resistance. A rail with a higher wear resistance will be more stable in the profile and therefore sticking to the design state for much longer time. This will help to improve the curving behavior and ensure a good curving for a very long time without any need for maintenance. This is the effect of profile stability as we call it and this is what we can do by adjusting the material, the rail material itself. One of the first scientific studies to analyze the wear behavior of wheel and rail materials was carried out by Steele and Reeve in the early 1980s at the Fast Test Loop in Pueblo, Colorado. One of the major findings was that in a configuration where the rails are harder than the wheels, which is the case in most fields of railway application, an increase of rail hardness does not affect wheel wear. Because of the resulting rail wear decrease, a reduction of total system wear is the consequence. Years later, in the late 1990s, a full-scale wheel rail test rig trial was run at First Alpine Rail Technology to compare the influence of various rail steels on ER7 standard railway wheels. The results confirmed what had already been demonstrated by Steel and Reef. Rail wear could be significantly decreased by using more advanced rail material with no adverse effect on wheel wear. 
A recent literature review of Graz Technical University from 2022, summarizing 27 papers, concludes that all studies prove that wheel wear is not affected by increasing rail hardness. The profile stability is a very important factor for the running behavior of railway vehicles. Especially the conicity has to be in the right range. The conicity doesn't have to be too small and it doesn't have to be too big. As long as it stays in the right range, uh, we get a good stability and uh, we get a good running behavior of the vehicle. We did close examinations with SCDU in Switzerland, where a uh, wear resistant uh, rail was installed. And uh, this wear resist uh, resistant rail led to very small wear on the infrastructure and on the vehicle. And uh, we got a very good uh, running behavior, a very good running quality of the vehicles. So it is uh, the most important that the profile of the wheel and of the rail stays as long as possible in the nominal conditions. Therefore, wear resistant rails have a high impact on the wear of the vehicle and of the infrastructure. Summarizing Mr. Joch's experiences, the increased profile stability of the higher strength rails can be used to ensure good curving behavior over time with little need for rail maintenance. This good curving behavior further reduces stresses in the wheel-rail interface and therefore has material-friendly effects for the wheels. In heavy haul operation, these effects have already been taken advantage of. E.g., the Brazilian iron ore mining company MRS has combined high-strength 400 UHC rails with a wheel-rail interface optimization. As a result, they didn't only prolong rail service lives, but also tripled wheel service lives. To finally summarize the question of wheel-rail total system wear, we are going to ask Professor Anders Eckberg from Chalmers to summarize the current state of scientific knowledge. When you have wheels operating on rails, you get wear due to the sliding between them. And essentially, the harder the materials are, the less wear you get. You can get cracks in the rail. And it turns out, slightly surprisingly maybe, that harder rails are actually not worse on cracking. They're probably better on cracking, both definitely on the initiation and probably on the, how fast the crack grows once they are there. When it comes to wear between wheel and rails, I think it's a clear understanding that the harder the materials are, the less wear you get. That's the theoretical answer. The more practical answer is that as the wear is a slower process, you tend to stick with the profile. And that's a good thing if you have a good profile match between the wheels and the rail. But if you have a bad profile match between the wheels and the rail, you have to live it there for a longer time. That can give you crack initiation. If you get that, the cracks tend actually to form slower on the harder rail. And also it seems they grow slower on the harder rail, which is a bit surprising. You would expect that since it's harder, it should be a bit less ductile and it would grow faster, but it seems that that is not the case. When you talk about wheel rail interface and which materials and you should have and the mechanisms for failure and deterioration, then it's a lot of things that are still either unknown or being developed. It's everything from which, how to improve the materials. Uh, you also look into the lubrication side. How can you manage a good friction between the wheel and the rails so you can break? You look into questions as trying to predict when cracks form, how fast they grow, so you know when to do maintenance. You look into issues such as profiles, which is the perfect profile you should have and how bad can it be before you have to mitigate it by grinding the rail. You look into things like uh, digital twins, that is how can you monitor the status of your rail and your wheels and how can you put that into predictive models. So there are a lot of things that are still open. And every time you solve a problem, the axle load gets increased, you get more loading and to try to go faster so you get new problems. So uh, <laughs> we're trying to evolve all the time. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, there is more behind it, or in the case of the rail inside it, than you might think at first glance. Still not convinced? Tune in again for the next episode of Rail Insights, where we'll be talking about sustainability.
Fødselsdagbine. One step ahead.